by not trading them away, their bonus pool is bigger in the draft this year. They draft a whole bunch of guys who maybe in two years were sitting at the trade deadline and AJ Preller's acquiring someone else and he did it because their draft pool was bigger. Back on FT, we're talking to AJ Casavell from MLB.com. He covers the Padres for years. AJ, great to have you on. Thanks for the time. And let's get right into it. Uh, your job is certainly interesting. You've been covering AJ Preller for most of your career. So can you at least give some credit to uh, him specifically for making your job very exciting this time of year? Yeah, it's like last night is one of my favorite nights of sleep ever because the night after the trade deadline is the first night I know AJ Preller can't do anything. And so, yes, he's made my job incredibly interesting. He's gotten me a lot of people reading my stories because there's always something crazy he's doing. And I mean, he traded a whole bunch of prospects to get really good at the trade deadline. We've seen this before. It happened in 2020, happened in 2022, and now we'll see where it goes in 2024. Can we, can we get one of y'all to change your name, please? Because there's too many AJs. Um, <laughs> well, AJ Ellis in this... is in the organization, too. So we're Yeah, that's too many. It's too many. <laughs> too many. Uh, all right. So we're talk- I know we're going to talk trade deadline, but I want to dig into last night. They stole that game last night. I, they were down 5 nothing late. Obviously, they scored two in the ninth, scored one in the tenth to walk them off. But is this the feeling? Like, the, that place was rocking. I was there in 2022 yep. when the Padres beat the Dodgers. I've taken heat for saying that was Padres fans – World Series. Well, now the Padres are out again, and they've kind of dominated the Dodgers this year. They stole the game last night. Is this what we're looking forward to? And can this team make a deep run with the trades that Mr. Preller has made? I think they can. And I think like last night was a pretty good example of a lot of the reasons why the Padres believed in this team enough to go out and make the moves they did and maybe sacrifice some of their future because they've kind of shown this penchant offensively for never really being out of a game. Their offense has been pretty resilient they, they they have a lot of guys that work a lot of deep counts and fight and are hard to just put away and they've kind of taken on that persona team-wide and throughout games too I mean they're down five nothing in the first inning they didn't they, they didn't seem out of it because they haven't seemed out of it they were down six nothing to the Orioles on Sunday and they came back made it six five and Cedric Mullins made a great catch at the wall like they're that kind of team right now where they're hard to put away I also think like last night was even though none of those guys they got in trades pitched like it was partly an example of why they're going to be so good because they have those guys coming in today and they were able to use fire some of those bullpen arms adrian morihone jeremiah estrada late in the game to keep the dodgers at five and then they they managed to come back and win it it was i mean it was a really really fun night at the ballpark all right before we hit trade i have to talk about the ballpark how on earth does every week they break the attendance record are they like bringing in lawn chairs (laughs) like Every time, oh my goodness, Petco Park breaks a new attendance record. What's what's the shtick there? What's the gimmick? Yeah, so they just they just added a whole bunch of uh, I guess standing room in the uh, the park area out in beyond center field, Gallagher Square. So they did that earlier this season. Hence them having broken the record, I believe, four times this season. So I mean, it it makes for a pretty electric atmosphere. But we've seen crowds like this before, like that crowd in the twenty twenty two playoffs. Like when they pack them in there, it's it it's. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to see. As someone who covered the team and has covered the team for a decade in 2016, 2017, when there wasn't this kind of buzz, this is uh, this is this is a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, listen, I was there for the first ever game at Petco Park. It wasn't that many people there. I mean, it was packed, obviously, <laughs> but it was not what I've seen the last. And, and by the way, they've had, I don't know, what, 60 home games or something. They've sold out like 45 of them. Some crazy number. I mean, I was there a couple weeks ago. I asked for two tickets for like family members. And they're like, yeah, we can't get you tickets. I'm like, wait, I can't get two tickets for like, I called Don Diego. Don Diego couldn't get two tickets for me. I'm like, what is happening here in San Diego? It used to be if anybody and everybody you want tickets for can get in, but it's awesome for San Diego. In that park they put out there in center field is, is nice touch boys and girls in San Diego because people freaking love it. But onto the trades. All right. Which trade is going to have more of an impact? Cease, Arise, Scott, which one of these, like the three big names that we're talking about here, will have the most impact on the Padres, not only getting to the postseason, but possibly going deep in the postseason? It's interesting because the, the first two guys have obviously had a, had a major impact already. And so like getting to the postseason, you can't disquantify like what they've done. But adding Tanner Scott at the deadline, what that does for a bullpen it makes it look like one of those October bullpens that you just can't touch. And so the Padres 
get to October, which is going to be helped by getting guys like Cease and Arise early in the season, if they can get to October, then all of a sudden it's like a five or six inning game because of the arms they have at the back end. Obviously, Robert Suarez and Tanner Scott, two all-star closers for the eighth and ninth innings, but they also have Jeremiah Estrada, Adrian morihone has been outstanding, and they added Jason Adam from the Rays. Like, this is one of those kinds of bullpens. And I think, I, I guess it really kind of all comes down to rotation health and whether they can hold up going forward because they didn't reinforce their rotation, I think, the way some people thought they would. They added Martin Perez, but but little else, and there's question marks around Joe Musgrove and... Obviously, we don't know when you Darvish is coming back. And then uh, Matt Waldron and Michael King have passed their career highs in innings. So we don't know how this rotation is going to hold up. But if it holds up, the pitchers are all really good. Those pitchers have all pitched really well lately. The Padres' rotation right now is a strength, even though it's their probably biggest question mark going forward. So uh, I guess with Dylan Cease at the front of that, uh, he's pitching like a game one starter right now. So to answer long-winded way of answering your question, I guess I'd go Cease. But Tanner Scott makes his team look like a team that can – really compete in October. Unbelievable bullpen. But is yeah. AJ Preller just the only one that's willing to trust the numbers in a league that we're all about the numbers. We're all about trusting the numbers. 3.6 of all prospects in the last 10 years have made a significant impact on their big league roster. And you tweeted, the Padres are going for it. Over the past three days, they made that abundantly clear. Why are they going for it after they traded nine of their prospects, including six of their top 12? Three percent of the 12 of the nine guys that they've traded, you know how many that is that make an impact in the big leagues? Less than one. Not even a full player. Not even a full player. So shouldn't everybody be doing this? Yeah, and I think AJ's also done it relatively smartly too because Ethan Salas and Leia Dallas DeVries I think the guys that that everyone look at in that system and and think like those are the impact guys going forward he hung on to them and maybe that was at the expense of getting a starting pitcher like Derek Skubal or Garrett Crochet because those guys were probably the starting points for that kind of deal but Preller has he's he's got this knack for depleting a farm system whether it's at a trade deadline or before a season to acquire big league ready talent and then using the draft and using other means to replenish it so that two years from now they can go out and trade those guys like it's a philosophical thing that the padres are willing to trade those guys but it's also kind of a credit to the organization for finding guys that other teams are interested in trading for and then the padres can go out and acquire tanner scott and jason adams so i think you look at what the padres gave up to get those guys and, and you look at maybe what we thought the market rate was going to be a few days ago it, 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 was, it was pricey. They paid a steep price to make their bullpen one of the best in baseball. But they're also confident that they can build their farm system back to where they have more of those guys, whether it ends up being as trade chips, like we've seen so often with Preller, or whether they're guys that impact the big league roster like you have right now with, with the Jackson Merrill. How do they do it? I want to know how he does it. How does, I know Preller was a scout for a long time with the Rangers when he came up through that, kind of through that system, but... How does he do it? Because other teams are so scared, like kind of what Kratz said, but how does he do it? Because they, they're they not making trades for prospects. They keep trading prospects away and keeping the Jackson Merrill, keeping the Ethan Salas, like you said, and no other team can do it. So what is, what's Preller's magic formula? Because you say every two years he reloads. Well, every year there's a draft. Every year players are – the same players are available for draft and free agent signings from, from you know foreign countries, Latin America – so what is Preller's secret? Because no one else seems to figure it out. Well, he's he's done a good job in those in like maybe the middle rounds of those drafts, getting guys, acquiring guys that teams want. But I think the biggest thing is just he he laid it out yesterday in his press conference. Like we're not scared to make trades, and we're not scared to make trades in which players we're giving up will eventually go on to become major league players. And he's done that. Like Max Fried and Trey Turner were Padres that he traded away early in his tenure. And those aren't particularly pretty trades. He's made some, he's made some rough trades relatively recently, but I think organizationally, they feel like, you know what, we have these targets. We know some of the players we're giving up are going to go on to become really, really good players down the line, but we're trying to do what suits us right now while keeping some flexibility to rebuild a farm system into something that can be really good down the road. And so it's, I think it's just a philosophical thing more than anything else. They aren't afraid to trade prospects away, even when those prospects, 
I mean, look, Robbie Snelling, I, I've been really high on Robbie Snelling. I think he could be a really good pitcher down the road. If Tanner Scott gets them deep into October this season, that's just the trade-off the Padres are willing to make that maybe some other teams aren't. That has to make you feel so good as a Padres fan, though, doesn't it? I mean, I know you're not a fan. You're just a beat writer, <laughs> you know, but you're not allowed to root for him. But the people in San Diego, that's got to make you really happy that, you know what, we're not hoarding prospects for five years from now. We're going for it every single chance we get it's got to be and that's why they pack that's why they pack petco and like crouchy said they keep setting attendance records because the fans you walk around san diego they are into it yeah it's it's the the buzz is palpable right now and it's i think it's a product of what they've done to the big league roster they've not only that like they've, they've built a core of players who are very who are here for obviously a long time and say what you will about some of the contracts they sign, but this is a group of players that the Padres are, that are going to be Padres for a long time. And then you supplement that roster by going for it. And they went for it last year at the trade deadline when they were five and a half games out. Now there's a difference between giving up a whole bunch of prospects for Tanner Scott and then some of the trades they made last season, which were a little, a little more subtle, but they didn't trade Josh Hader and Blake Snell away. And then I think they took a big picture view of that where they could have traded Blake Snell and Josh Hader away and probably gotten a lot for them given what they gave up this season for kind of similar type talent. But by not trading them away, their bonus pool is bigger in the draft this year. They draft a whole bunch of guys who maybe in two years were sitting at the trade deadline and AJ Preller's acquiring someone else. And he did it because their draft pool was bigger because they got draft picks for not trading those guys away. So it's just a commitment to being good right now while keeping one eye kind of sort of on the future and, and how you can replenish that farm system and rebuild it. And also a confidence that they have the scouting group that will do that because they've proven that they can do that in the past. How is the feeling right now in the org? We talked about how the fans feel, public reacting to the trades, but this offseason it came out that AJ Preller was kind of butting heads because he can micromanage. Is that still the feeling? Is there still some like, uh, you know, people don't want to don't want to step on anybody's toes, or is it all peachy keen because they're winning and they just beat the Dodgers last night? I think winning cures a lot of things, as you well know. It's it, <laughs> everyone, everyone uh, like this. It's a different team, and I think Mike Schilt was maybe kind of the the voice that this group needed. He's very even keel, and when when things kind of went off the rails early in the season, he's kind of been defiant in his belief in the long term of this team and what they're what they're going to accomplish and so you you set that as the baseline and I don't think there's too much there, there's too much of that discord this season because a the Padres are winning b maybe they took kind of a more uh look last season was its own beast it was one of the weirdest things I've ever seen I, I can't imagine I'll ever cover a weirder season because that was an 82 win team that on paper probably looked more like a 98 win team but everything that could have gone wrong went wrong and that in and of itself just kind of led to it, it it didn't lead for a happy environment whether in the clubhouse in the front office and I, I think that's just understandable when the expectations are as high as they are and you're not living up to them it almost felt like every game they won well no one really took the time to enjoy it because they were supposed to be doing it and every game they lost felt felt so kind of soul crushing in there uh that's not how you can go about a baseball season and that's not how they're going about this baseball season when they've lost games when they've found themselves in losing streaks it hasn't felt like the whole season is spiraling it's just kind of felt like the way a baseball season goes and i don't think there was there was much of that last year it's yeah, just the little things i mean i'm obviously a little more outside than you but you know you catch the end of padres games and you're like oh, this just didn't happen last year. These little things always went against them. And it was consistent. Literally. Though. I mean, eventually it was consistent. Literally. It's not like, oh, <laughs> fluke, we're getting unlucky. It's like, no, something <laughs> you're doing is wrong because it keeps happening. It changed. But yeah, it's a much more fun team to watch. And the way this bullpen looks, damn, if they get in the playoffs, they're going to be a problem. AJ, this was awesome. Thanks for joining us. Enjoy the rest of the series. Uh, everyone give a follow to AJ Cassavell, C A S S A B E. LL and follow his articles on MLB.com. Thanks, AJ. Thanks, guys. Hey, FT fam, it's Alana Rizzo. I can't stop talking about Viore. Viore is perfect if you are sick and tired of traditional old workout gear. I wear Viore in all settings, not just in the gym, because honestly, it's comfier than whatever you're currently wearing. No joke. I'm wearing Viore daily leggings right now. They're high-waisted with the drawstring and cuffed ankles. They look good and they feel great. You're going to love them. Viore is an investment in your happiness. For our listeners, they are offering 20% off your 
your first purchase. Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at viori.com slash foul. That's V-U-O-R-I dot com slash foul. Not only will you receive 20% off your first purchase, but enjoy free shipping on any U.S. orders over $75 and free returns. Go to viori.com slash foul and discover the versatility of Viori clothing. Hey, everybody. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content. We're back here every weekday, all year long, so do not miss an episode. The videos are coming in all day. Here's another video you might enjoy. Baseball the way it should be covered.